the protagonist of the game, Tim, burdened by the recent disappearance of his wife Jane, is unable to cope, willing to do anything in order to find her. That's when he starts reading her diaries, discovering the horrible truth of what she had done, leading to her disappearance, ending up in a purgatory-like place called Hendrance, where tortured souls dwell within. Hi folks, I'm R, and welcome to the video. Make sure to send me your game suggestions on Twitter, which I could cover in the upcoming videos. This video will contain spoilers. With that said, let's begin. Babe, wake up. Mm. It's late, huh? Mm. You have to wake up. Okay. I'm getting up. Jane? Last night was way too much. Tim, waking up after what seems to have been a wild party, finds himself in an unfamiliar building, not knowing where his wife Jane is. Exploring the dark building, he picks up a flashlight and starts to investigate the area to find Jane. In the strange, seemingly abandoned building, which resembles the interior design of a school, Tim finds a newspaper with a striking article of a university student having had been reported missing on 28th of September 1996. It's only indicated the student was last seen suffering from a stomach ache and heading home. Strange events start to occur, with an unrecognizable woman appearing shortly before disappearing, making Tim believe it could be his wife. Going after her, he finds her in a room when she turns her head around in an unnatural way, revealing that she is someone else, with Tim only thinking she was his wife. This unknown woman drenched in blood chases after Tim relentlessly while holding a buck scutter who escapes hiding in a locker. As Tim holds his breath, being terrified, he witnesses this woman go through a blotch of blood on the wall acting as a portal. Unsure to what he just witnessed, not believing his own eyes, he continues his search for his wife with more determination. Tim then soon comes across an instruction for a curse called the Cursed Nails Jinx, which is used on one's enemy, causing the target to have cursed nails filling up their stomachs, usually leading to death. A note left next to this curse instruction displays who requested the recipe for the curse. The curse was to be performed against a person called Shane, a person whom someone despised contacting an oculist called Chai with their number written on the note. Maybe this curse has something to do with the vengeful female entity chasing after Tim. This vengeful spirit seems to be sorrowful, weeping in agony and puking blood, as if she regrets a decision she made while being alive, leading to the fate she has to suffer for eternity. Another jinx is soon found called the Lechery Jinx, which makes one fall in love with the person performing the jinx. It all seems as if someone wanted someone to fall in love with them, however, it backfired with them resorting into using a curse. Tim soon comes across another newspaper with the article of the missing girl being connected to witchcraft. After the authorities find satanic artifacts and tools in her room, assuming that her disappearance is somehow connected, the article was published on 30th of September 1996, suggesting the girl has been missing since 26th. That's when Tim gets chased by the vengeful entity yet again, chasing after him relentlessly, which leads to Tim managing to go through a small door, which lets him enter his house through a cupboard. Tim, unsure to what he just experienced being a bad dream or reality, he listens to a voicemail by his friend Du, a friend whose calls Tim has been ignoring. That's when he realizes that Jane has been missing for some time, dismissing his experience as a nightmare. The current time is 2013 in modern Thailand, with Tim and his wife Jane married for two years, with Tim only having had just recently managed to save up enough money to move together to their own house, being there for one year only before she disappeared. Finding her diaries, which she kept secret from Tim, revealed that she suffered from paranoia of being watched and visual delusions after having a nightmare of being chased and taken by an entity. She even seems to talk to herself in her own diary diary, displaying as if there is someone else. After following a red string which leads back to the stair cupboard, Tim hears cries of Jane which makes him decide to go through it in order to find her. 
This time, Tim is teleported into a large wooden house, seemingly in a forest, finding another diary by Jane, whose condition is deteriorating, finding herself yet again in a realistic nightmare, being exactly where Tim is right now, in a wooden house, explaining what awaits Tim further in the house, a gigantic shadowy monster which Jane was terrified of. This explains that Tim is seemingly going through the same nightmares and paranormal events as Jane did, which led to her disappearance, something that could also happen to Tim. A radio announcement then reports on a motorcycle gang that has been committing crimes, with more than 10 of them having had been arrested, with some photos of bikers suggesting that they belong to them. A radio sermon then warns wrongdoers of committing sins and crimes as they would end up in a limbo, being tortured for their deeds with entities having small mouths, unable to feast, destined to suffer and stay hungry for what they did once they were alive. When you've done unkind things to others, either to family or friends, and you badly hurt those who are kind to you, and you commit crimes, and you cause others disturbances, the karma will be facing you when you pass away. Once the karma is done with you, you'll be reborn as a ghost, drawn in wonder to all the places you were once seen, lost in the eternal limbo. All of you may be aware of the screams which can be heard in the distance at nightfall, the sound made by a creature with a mouth as small as a pinhole, unable to feast, unable to go, wandering around aimlessly and hungrily, full of pain as it is being tortured. Further down, the wooden house changes into a school once again, with the large shadow entity showing up, destroying anything in its way. Finding a note, Tim finds out that this entity is called a preta, an entity widely known in Buddhism, Hinduism, and other related religions. This entity used to be human, someone who committed sins such as stealing, with Thai people also believing it could be related to treating parents badly. This entity is usually large but has a mouth the size of a pinhole, reborn as these creatures to suffer from hunger. Another note explains that Pritas are trapped in a limbo to suffer for eternity. As a result of their agonizing pain and hunger, they lash out and hurt anyone around them. One way to bypass and calm them is to provide them with some spiritual food offering. This connects the announcements of the biker gang to these entities, with the leader of the gang dying a horrible death of having a metal rod piercing through his left eye, becoming the large Prita with other smaller Pretas roaming around being the other members of the gang. As Tim finally catches up to Jane, the enormous Preta separates them with Jane running away. Tim follows the instructions of the note he found earlier and feeds the Preta, who quickly leaves, leaving them at peace. Tim then goes through the cupboard once more, arriving back at his home which is in a bad state now, with furniture scattered around as if it has been ransacked. The door, as before, seems to be wrapped in a red string, which seems to also go over all of the house. The red string intersecting at many points and wrapped around the house represents the interconnection between all things and events in perfect harmony with the universe. It also represents the cycle of samsara, the Buddhist belief of all life going through birth, life, death, and rebirth with all living things having a spirit or a soul and being reborn accordingly to their actions in their life. Hence why the Pritas were reborn in such grotesque manner, suffering for their actions. A flashback shows how paranoid and terrified Jane became when they were in the house together before, with Jane pointing to an unseen entity in the corner of the room, which visibly made Tim uneasy after not seeing anything. The constant repeating nightmares, vivid visions and noise seemingly drove Jane to the brink of insanity, something that Tim was not supportive about. Tim then goes to the bathroom where he finds a deep pool of blood, which he steps on, going through it, acting as a portal, teleporting him into the school. That's where he sees his wife again running away from him, which confuses Tim to why she would do something like this, leading to him running after her as well. 
Meanwhile, he's also chased by the vengeful ghost of the woman holding a box cutter, including the small Pretas. He then enters a room where he finds a newspaper with an article continuing the story of the missing schoolgirl. The girl's buddy, named Belle, was found in the multi-purpose room of the university, having had decomposed so badly, being left there for several days, which caused people notice its horrible smell, leading to her buddy being found. Her body was submerged in blood, with many nails being found next to her corpse, as if the cursed nails jinx was used against her, explaining the stomach ache she suffered from. This portrays how the vengeful entity chasing after Tim is no other than Belle, a university student who possibly died from a curse. This becomes more evident as a doll with many nails stuck to it is found in the university, and a note continuing to explain what the literary jinx actually involves. Literary jinx doesn't only make the target fall in love, but makes them become possessed by the spirit that came with the ritual clay figurine. The targets often lose their mind and identity, with the spirit of the spell controlling their body. The horrifying thing is that the summoned spirit will always follow the person who casted the spell until their death, as even the smallest separation causes them to suffer. Another note continuing on the cursed nails jinx expands that if the target becomes aware that they are being targeted with this curse, the curse reverses and becomes effective on the person who casted it. This often makes the suffering greater and usually leading to death. Through some more notes, it's revealed that the female entity, Belle, was a university student who fell in love with another student called Shane. To end up with them, instead of what normal people do having conversations, Belle Belle studies witchcraft and dark magic, performing literary jinx in order to make Shane fall in love with her. Under mysterious circumstances, Belle dies, suggested to be due to another spell that she tried to cast, a cursed nails jinx, which backfired with herself becoming the victim. As read, if the target becomes aware of someone casting the spell on them, the curse reverses and causes the caster to suffer even worse. Before her death, however, she managed to successfully perform the literary jinx, making Shane fall in love with her. Shane, being possessed by the spirit of the ritualistic clay figurine, suffers immensely, being separated from Bill, which leads to him taking his own life. Tim, understanding the story, opens the path for Bill and leads her to the corpse of Shane in order to be confronted with her deeds and what they caused. Saddened by the scene of the death of her love, Belle drops to her knees and starts weeping, leaving Tim alone, who continues on his journey to find his wife, someone who runs away from him for unclear reasons. Through some of Jane's diaries, it's revealed she sought the help of a monk to protect her from the evil and vindictive souls. After Tim didn't believe her experiencing paranormal events and didn't seem to want to help. Jane obtains a ritualistic dagger from a novice monk and hides it in the cupboard in order to save herself. Tim suddenly teleports back to his house with the red strings present and even tangled inside the house. That's when the story changes to Jane's perspective, holding a knife and a candle, trying to protect herself against the souls that have been trying to hunt her, taking the matters into her own hands. That's when she's intercepted and incapacitated by a woman in traditional Thai attire. Leave me alone! Stay away from me! And it goes through I'll stab you! I said... Suddenly, the perspective changes to Thames, who watches the news on TV that a solar eclipse is due to happen. A voice message by Du, Tim's friend, explains that since the disappearance of Jane, he's been drinking heavily, avoiding Du's calls, and acting self-destructive. Hey Tim, I've been trying to reach you, man. Uh, did you turn off your phone? Uh, your colleagues, they're worried about you, and so am I. You really need to take it easy with the drinks. You aren't young anymore. Look, man, I'm here if you need to talk. We all want you to be yourself again. We're rooting for you. 
Reading another diary by Jane, written a few months prior, it becomes evident what the place is that Tim needs to visit now. A dark forest filled with carcasses of animals, a dream that haunted Jane. Tim has a blackout right after and wakes up in the forest with a radio announcement coming from a radio placed in the forest, an unlikely place a radio would be found. The announcement being from 1959 correlates with the current events that a mythical entity seems to be the culprit of slaying the animals. It seems as if Tim has time traveled back to 1959, facing this frightening being. Strange sinister sounds start to instill fear in Tim when he encounters a horrifying entity floating in air, having a head attached to mangled upper torso with exposed internal organs. This entity is named Krasu, a tortured soul which has been reborn as such to suffer an eternity of fisting on rotten food. Managing to enter a wooden house, Tim soon comes across a newspaper with an article published on 23rd of May 1956 reporting on a 20-year-old dancer called Rotri being found dead in her room, having a completely mangled and twisted corpse. The police not finding any sort of clue of how she died presume it might involve her 23-year-old boyfriend, Ming, who has been reported missing. Several visions revealed that Rotri had a sister called Tida, who was always compared with Rotri and put down by their grandmother, with the grandmother favoring Rotri and making Tida feel horrible. You're hopeless! What's the point of being my grandchild if you can't pull it off? What a waste! Look at your little sister. Can you show her how to do it? However, as time passes, Tida proves to be the better dancer and the more humble one. Rotri, on the other hand, being spoiled, vain and feeling superior to her sister, believes she's better and more beautiful than her, often using her attractiveness to get everything handed to her. Meanwhile, Tim is chased by the female entity dressed in traditional Thai dancer outfit, who is capable of possessing the multiple dancer mannequins scattered around, making her encounter specifically horrifying. Even more visions reveal that Tida becomes nominated to replace a girl that ran away for taking the dancing roles, which causes Rotri to have an outburst and claim she is the better one. Should have been given to me. I'm prettier and can dance better than Tida. Why is she chosen? This is unfair. Calm biased. yourself down, Rotri. This is not bias or anything. With all well consideration. I chose what is best for the situation. No, you're biased! Don't you give me that tone, young lady. Have a good look at yourself, would you? Start with the thought that your beauty will get you what you want. If you won't step away from the mirror and practice like Tita, then you would never get anything handed to you for the rest of your life. Subsequently, being faced with the reality that Tida is better at dancing, out of jealousy and spite, Rotri frames her sister of stealing the teacher's wife's belongings, asking Meng to place them in her room. Tida suffers a horrible fate of having her arm cut off for allegedly stealing, which is implied to have caused her death who possesses mannequins at the dance school, still trapped with her soul dancing for eternity. On the other hand, Rotri is shown to have instructed Meng to steal the belongings of the teacher's wife, who then believes Rotri owes him a favor to intimately repay him. Rotri, disgusted with the thought, only seeing Meng as someone she can use, just like many others thanks to her superficial beauty, Meng tries to force himself on her when she suddenly starts getting possessed and transforming into the dancing entity, reborn as a jealous and vindictive spirit, stuck with the wind of taking the main role of being the heroine dancer. With the help of Tida's spirit, Tim manages to use their spiritual knife and get rid of Rotri while he witnesses the soul of Tida still devoted to dancing, working hard to become better instead of thinking her beauty and vanity provides her with everything. As Tim carries on walking, the injuries he sustained fighting Rotri causes him to faint. When he reawakens in a temple, accompanied by a novice monk who bandages him up and treats his wounds. I bandaged you up, but you need to lie down so your wounds can heal. It hurts. Who are you? A monk? I am just a novice, not yet a monk. Now please be calm. The 
Jung explains the term that the world he wandered into trying to find Jane is a spirit realm called Hendrance. A limbo-like place where many souls are stranded in, souls that still have attachments to life, preventing them to fully move on. The monk continues to explain that neither of Jane nor Tim are supposed to be here, but they have been tormented with this fate as someone has used magic against them. With the monk trying to persuade Tim to leave Jane as it's too late for her to be rescued, he takes some rest and awakens in a dark wooded area, still determined to find Jane, going even deeper into Hendrance, risking his own fate and life. That's where Tim encounters Chai, an old man who uses dark magic to trap souls of sinners and hindrance. As Tim tries to defend himself with the ritualistic knife, it proves to be ineffective, something that Jane tried to do prior, when Chai orders his large and powerful goon to kill Tim, who manages to cut off two of his fingers with a heavy blow using a weapon. As Tim narrowly escapes them, he starts vomiting blood and having a stomach ache, similar to Bill, as if the cursed nails jinx has been used against him. That's when the novice monk comes to his rescue and takes him back to the temple, a pocket dimension which acts as a shelter in the hindrance. The monk explains Chai is an oculist who traps the souls in hindrance in order to absorb their energy, not fully knowing why he targeted Jane and Tim. The monk then forges a special knife with specific ingredients which Tim collects, seemingly allowing the knife to hurt Chai. As Tim tries to pick it up, it infuses with him, letting him have the power at will, something he is strictly advised to use for protection against evil and not for harming anyone, as it would reverse its power and hurt him as well. The knife can only be used for protection and to seize the spirit. Do not use it with harmful intent or the occult will consume your soul. Tim then gets on his way trying to find Jane, seeing her standing at the edge of a cliff. As he tries to catch her, she transforms into a ritualistic doll, with Tim managing to take it, when Chai and his minion arrive at the scene and knock him out. Silence! I'm not going to kill him just yet. The two of you will get an opportunity to die together. <laughs> It's time! Take her away for now! Before fully waking up, Tim hears Jane's cries being taken away. He then wakes up finding himself in a cell, which he quickly manages to break out of, being back on his mission to rescue Jane. Traversing through the dungeons, the large minion dubbed as the Executioner breaks through a wall unable to see Tim stand right next to him, which reveals to Tim that he is in fact blind, making it somewhat easier for Tim to bypass him. After some time traversing further, the ground beneath Tim collapses, resulting in him entering a large cave. There he encounters the Executioner, whom he manages to kill using a large cannon, or at least, that's what he thinks. After some time, the Executioner breaks through another wall, depicting how invincible he is, starting to chase after Tim. Tim then manages to reach Chai, performing some rituals, when he stabs the Oculist, when the Executioner catches up to him. Trying to protect himself, the power in his arm turns the Executioner into stone, seemingly killing both Chai and his minion. The structure within the cave starts to collapse and crumble, with Tim running with all his might to escape. Reading some notes, it's revealed that Chai tried to open the gates of hell, obtaining some sort of power unmatched to anything in the real world. For that, he needed the energy of many souls, including the spirits of Bell and Ratri, hence why he trapped so many of them in the hindrance and intended to use them. Tim manages to find the bodies of Bell, Rotri, and the bike gang leader, eventually finding Jane tied to a pillar. Jane, wake up. I'm here. Tim? It's me. Let's go, Jane. It's all over. We can go home now. Oh, you came for me. I thought no one would ever find me. I'm here. Jane, it's really me. No need to be afraid anymore. I made a promise that I'd be there for you no matter what. 
I'd never leave you. Oh, oh this... This is... Oh, I'm sorry, too. I'm truly sorry, too. I'm so sorry, too. Don't be. There's no need to cry. It's me who screwed up. I'm the one who needs to be apologizing. I'm sorry I didn't take care of you. No. I'm sorry I wasn't there for you. And I'm sorry that I never believed you when you told me about all this. Oh, Tim. Tim. I'm so sorry, Tim. But this is all my fault. <laughs> It's then implied through some notes and the apologetic behavior of Jane that she cheated on Tim with his best friend Du, hence why her soul was damned to be stuck in Hendren's suffering for her sins. Tim? Oh, uh, Jane? Hey, it's Du. Uh, is Tim there? He hasn't been answering his cell. Oh. Oh, oh, oh hello, Du. Um, no, no, Tim's not here. He left early today. Something came up and he rushed out. He said he'd call me when he was done, but he hasn't called yet. He must be really busy. What? Really? It's Song Cran Day and he's still working? Uh, I thought you two made plans to spend your Song Cran at Chiang Mai. I'm not doing anything over the holiday either. So hey, if you need a hand with your gardening, I'm just a call away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll be fine. I wouldn't want to bother you. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't be a bother. That's what friends are for. Jane explains in her diaries that she felt let down and abandoned by Tim, who was distracted with work constantly, even slowly developing a habit of drinking, barely spending any time with her. Jane, being an aspiring book writer, always tried to share her synopsises with Tim, who didn't show any interest and usually criticized her writing. But Du, instead of criticizing her, always encouraged her and showed enthusiasm and even spent time with her. That's when Jane starts comparing Tim to Du, saying that she wished Tim would be more like him. A further piece of diary unveils that Jane became very ashamed and remorseful after a specific action, feeling immense guilt and being apologetic to what she had done to Tim, which all indicate that she was unfaithful, something that she regretted. When freeing Jane, Tim also apologizes to Jane for not being there for her and for not believing her when she tried to console in him. As they prepare to leave, the executioner suddenly comes to the mix and severely injures Jane, kicking Tim down a pit. Tim is then faced with a monstrous infusion of both Chai and the executioner, whom Tim manages to incapacitate after an arduous battle. As he rushes towards Jane, life leaves her buddy as she says how much she loves him. Tim decides to leave the cave when the embodiment of Chai forms in a floating head chasing after him, with the novice monk then suddenly appearing, instructing Tim to go back to the real world, letting him deal with the rest. Tim awakens back in his house, still saddened by the absence of Jane, with the house fully back to its normal state. The phone then rings, with Du on the line trying to check on Tim. He finally picks up, accepting his suggestion to meet up in his house, when he ominously looks at his arm, revealing that he still possesses his powers, saying in a sinister manner that he wants to talk to Du. This explains that Tim possibly wants to seek vengeance against Du, having an affair with his wife, causing her to have a bad karma, ending up in the hindrance. Tim finds Du responsible for the death of Jane, wanting to seemingly kill him with the newly obtained power. This is of course something the monk advised him against, leaving the fate of both Tim and Du unclear, and what would happen to them after death. It's possible, however, that Du could suffer for betraying his friend in the afterlife and for Tim to possibly have bad karma too and end up suffering as he is not supposed to use the power for harming anyone. That's it for this video, folks. Hope that you enjoyed it. It's been your host, Star, and I will see you on the next one.